Hello and welcome to UAT time within the United Countries special by First Ukraine. You can find us on the frequencies available on our website firstua.com. I'm Sergei Vilichansky. And I am Olivier Vidrin. UAT time is dedicated to bring Ukraine and Europe closer to each other by introducing the real Ukraine to the rest of the world. The situation in the east part of Ukraine, where the Russian-backed militants have created pseudo-republics, is still tensed. But are the things any different than the same time last year? Do Minsk agreements play an improving role or any role in the line of fire? Our guest today is Nikola Takusel, the founder of Smile for Ukraine. Welcome, Welcome Nikola. Thanks. Well, it's been a while than the, since your last time mm -hmm. uh, as our guest. Uh, how is everything going with Smile for Ukraine? After one year to Smile for Ukraine, uh, we are very happy of the results we can have because uh, uh, last year we have in uh, individual concession uh, more to 650 soldiers with okay. us. Uh, we have uh, 215 uh, psychologues to come in our master class and uh, we help uh, uh, 500 children with toy, with uh, clothes, with... Uh, so during 2015? Yes. You helped uh, over 500 children, and how many soldiers? 650. 650. Yes. In yeah. uh, individual concentration, in the rehabilitation program, and, uh, and with your, we, we, with his own money, with yeah. no help, no financial aid, with okay. his own money. Yes. Mm. All right. Well, that's uh, admirable. But um, now you <clears throat> you uh, travel quite often mm -hmm. to the east. Uh, yes. line of fire and where um, what was your recent uh, travel uh, I go for see of the reality of situation uh, because uh, when I work with soldats uh, in reputation for example it's very important for me to understand how they live this war mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think it is very important to going to go in this uh, at zone for see variety of battalion how they live what about mood yeah. psychological, mm -hmm. what they have need, because um, we can give for them, for example, clothes or food okay. for help them. Of course, my, my, my job, like psychologist, is not the good moment when they are in battalion for help them. But it's very important to be with them for, for they start to trust about my for Ukraine and for uh, step by step we have trust. But uh, do you see the dynamics? Uh, are things uh, getting any better? And, uh, you know, right there in the ATO zone. Uh, in ATO zone, uh, uh, it's very difficult. Well, it's, it, it's like this. How many times have you traveled to the ATO zone? I was uh, 15 times. 15 yes, times? for two or three days. The, the first time when, w was when? Uh, last year, I think near to m May. May. I okay, think, spring. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, it's <clears throat> almost a year, yes. pretty much. Uh, so, are there any differences? Yes. Okay. Uh, what is different is to know uh, in Ukraine, people, citizens of Ukraine, they think to war it's far. Yeah. And uh, it's very important for all soldiers to they feel support. For example, before they have a lot of support from citizens of Ukraine. Okay. Now they feel to it's more, you know, it's life, it's life continue. And, uh, yes. and it's very important. For example, uh, we, we make a lot of program for uh, close reputation, for close, for example, for help. And uh, sometimes it's, they are very happy to see to we come help them. It's like if we forget them. No, but, okay. Yeah, they, they need really a support. Now uh, the psychology in the Atul Zona, the soldiers, are very, can I say, disappointed. Uh, they feel that uh, everybody uh, forgot them and they are alone. Why, why, why do you say so? Because uh, we, we talked about that with uh, Nicola. They, okay. they, 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 are, they, are, they feel that uh, nobody takes care about them. No, 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 no. I, I, want to, I want to be objective because it's like, okay, nobody takes care of them. What, what do you mean? It's like, uh, what, what, why, why do you say so? For example, we have a lot of organization with volunteer people. Okay. They go in Donbass. Yes. And these volunteers are very strong. They have a lot of motivation for yes. them. And Ukraine are very lucky to have all these volunteers. You know, okay. every time in my master class, when I go in Kharkov, I meet with a lot of volunteer people. And uh, they make incredible work. Okay. But if they are not here, what people will help these soldiers? You know, it's normal. When you live, for example, in Kiev or in, 
far to at the ozone yeah. you are not only all the time you're in war you are you, you are your life you live your life you go in cinema you go in markets you go in shopping you no that's that's understandable yes but but war is war and being in army is always being in army it's mm -hmm. completely different mm -hmm. like even if you don't have uh, war yeah you know the soldiers could feel sad and uh, feel fi pity for themselves mm -hmm. because they are they're outside of this life mm -hmm. you know so the my 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 question was is there a difference as far as we will we'll come back to the psych, mm -hmm. psychology issue but as far as um, the situation in the line of fire like uh, it, what do you feel what do you see like when was the last time you were there last week last week okay so right in the beginning of mm -hmm. 2016 mm -hmm. so were you like a santa claus for them like yes. Okay, so you brought some yes. gifts. Yes, gifts and the okay. cross. Mm -hmm. So what do you feel? What what was the? Uh, I feel to war are not finished. Okay. Uh, to uh, in uh, in uh, borderline uh, is very very difficult because you can you can have an any moment tension between two between uh, people from uh, separatists yeah. and between Ukraine and uh, war are not finished. You know. Uh, okay. Every night we have uh, fighting in uh, near Avdiivka, near uh, Pieski, okay. all these zones. Every time it's war. Okay. Now, uh, of course, it's more good to last year. It's more, rela it's more uh, relaxed, yes, but it's not finished. No. Definitely yes, and it's no one says it's finished. But um, this is what the president of Ukraine had to say about Minsk agreements in his last week press conference. I want to demonstrate the dynamics and effectiveness of our negotiations. This chart demonstrates the pattern of shelling of Ukrainian positions by militants in 2015. This date here is August 31st, when we agreed on the so-called ceasefire regime. Yes, back in December and January, the ceasefire is being violated often, but you can see it for yourself, the difference between what was before Minsk and after. It is still shaky, but it has tremendously changed the numbers of casualties. That's, that's his uh, press conference. Yeah last uh, last week mm -hmm. so well actually it's quite uh, the obvious that you know the difference mm -hmm. no one says and the president admits that uh, it's definitely far away from where we want to be but uh, it's <clears throat> I always I you know I thought all the all the time uh, had there not been Minsk one and Minsk two mm -hmm. would we have done much better mm -hmm. or we would still or you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. you know what other alternatives could there have been without Minsk negotiations I think a mixed Minsk negotiation uh, really is not very efficient I think without Minsk, Minsk negotiation I think the result will be the same without without because you know the, the Ukrainian army Look, uh, we talked with uh, with Peter Dickinson about the miracle of the Ukrainian army. Yes, they stopped the in, uh, Russian invasion and uh, the separatist uh, inv invasion. Okay, they stopped, and uh, I think they, they, they did a, the great job. Without Minsk, they did a great job, okay. and I think Minsk uh, is uh, for me used by Putin to to free to to no, to froze the zone of uh, of Donbass mm -hmm. and uh, for me I think uh, the Minsk agreement is uh, more in favor of Russia and of the separatists that in favor of Ukraine because look at the Ukrainian army they really stopped the the Russian aggression and in my opinion and, and now we can't we can't speak to Ukraine have army uh, because uh, before they don't have a lot of equipment equipment yeah. from this yeah. war but now they start to be very good in uh, 
in uh, all potential for this army. Uh, and you know, I, I, I had a lot of interviews for, for French, uh, French media or European media about Minsk, Minsk 1 and Minsk 2. And I, I said that uh, really those agreement will be inefficient. And they are inefficient. Uh, they, uh, for me, they are only here to, to freeze the, the conflict not to solve the conflict. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, well, but it's obvious to me that, you know, the chart shows quite clearly, and that's uh, my impression as well, that uh, there is, uh, well, first of all, less casualties, mm -hmm. much less, mm -hmm. uh, much less, uh, uh, you know, people killed. Yes, but why? Why? Because of Minsk agreement or because of the Ukraine army and of the battalion of the volunteers? Well, that's why we're here to discuss. I think this is because of the Ukraine army and because of the battalion of the volunteers who stopped the separatists. But, uh, well, and yes and no, probably. Uh, what do you think? Me, I'm not politologue. Okay. <laughs> I, for being honest, I didn't check. But, uh, about Minsk. But you are the you are the only one of us. Uh, you are the only one from here yes. that me, were there. Me, I can speak about what I know. Mm -hmm. uh, I know to uh, your army are ready for be in war. Okay. Before they are not ready. Yes. They have a lot of training. They have a lot of new equipment. You have a lot of um, help from international help to help your army. Okay. To, for for shotgun for okay. for all. And uh, now we can, s we can really tell to Ukraine have strong army and she have very strong army very quickly. Mm -hmm. Maybe people from um, separatist not zone, they are not ready to fighting with Ukraine army. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's Minsk. Maybe no, it's but you know, at the beginning, at the beginning, uh, the Kremlin uh, gave the support to the separatists because they, they thought that they, that was possible to go uh, to Kiev directly without mm -hmm. any resistance. And they were very surprised that uh, the Ukraine army, the battalion of the volunteer, stopped in Donetsk, in the airport of Donetsk, in, uh, in the oblast of Lugansk. They stopped the uh, aggression of Russia. Mm -hmm. And that was a surprise. And after that, you have Minsk 1. Why? Because the plan of the Kremlin of Putin collapsed collapsed mm -hmm. because uh, really we have to say thank you to the Ukrainian army well no definitely yes uh, we wouldn't be even having the discussions if it was not for the uh, Ukrainian army but uh, but still my question is uh, you know it's been like a year that we have Minsk 1 and Minsk mm -hmm. 2 August uh, 31st was uh, the Minsk II, mm -hmm. uh, the, you know, sign up of the agreement. Uh, so my, my, my question is, are you trying to say that um, the Ukrainian army could just go and take that territory and the Russian army wouldn't, uh, as they did last summer, wouldn't uh, come in and wouldn't, uh, uh, it, uh, Engage. In, in my opinion now, uh, I think, I think, this is my analysis, I think that Putin uh, really want to give back the Donbass. He, he really, he, 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 he doesn't take care about the Donbass, really. Mm -hmm. uh, that was only to disturb Ukraine, and the result is that Ukraine is going to Europe without the Donbass or with the Donbass, okay? Then uh, now uh, the, the question of Putin is how I can escape from this uh, game because he, re he doesn't want the Donbass and what he will do with the Donbass, give the Donbass maybe again back to, to Ukraine. This is my opinion. I don't see that at this point. I, I, I think really okay. uh, Putin, put, Putin, Putin really want now to escape from this game because as you know, the, the price of the oil decreased, yeah, the economic situation in Russia dollars. is worse and worse, yeah. and the ruble now you need, uh, you need uh, uh, 80 
five rubles to have one euro. Yeah. What do you think about that? And now he's in war in Syria and is in war in Ukraine. Well, but at this point... The situation I don't, is I very bad. Don't, uh, I don't see at this point that he's ready to give up on the, on the Donbass region. But um, uh, again, these he days... He cannot pay. He cannot pay for two wars. Actually, uh, the recent information uh, from the Bild magazine, um, it shows uh, they, they researched that the Russian uh, Federation is paying about 79 million euros mm -hmm. a month mm -hmm. to maintain, the, to support and maintain these two uh, little so-called republics. And so it's about 1 billion euro a year. Good luck if That's, they want yeah. to continue to do a mistake. But uh, for me, in my opinion, uh, uh, I saw some analysis that uh, Putin really doesn't take care about the Donbass. And now is not only Putin, but all yeah. the Russian elite want to escape from this war in Ukraine. Well, I want to come back a little bit uh, right now to mm -hmm. what you do. Mm -hmm. uh, you, are, uh, you help our soldiers uh, psychologically <clears throat> to come back to become the people, at least to some extent, as they were before mm -hmm. the yes. war. Now uh, we are um, commemorating one year of uh, the Battle of Donetsk for Donetsk International Airport. Uh, after over 240 days of defiant and against all odds defense, the airport finally fell to combined Russian separatist for forces. Dozens of Ukrainian defenders died in the last days of the battle. Many perished in the rubble following the collapse of one of the few remaining ceilings in the airport terminal complex. Others died in the uh, kind of desperate hand-to-hand -hand fighting that had characterized the entire battle. Uh, those guys have been called cyborgs <laughs> yeah. by the uh, militants. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, have you uh, had any? Uh, have you dealt with some of those guys? Yes, of course. I work with them. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> uh, I meet. Uh, I work with two of them. Tell uh, me what the, what do they feel? How how do they manage to overcome that? Very difficult for them because uh, you know when they come back they have no rehabilitation, they have absolutely nothing, and uh, for them it was very very difficult when they come back from uh, this airport. Uh, now they um, they continue to help soldats uh, for like in rehabilitation. They have a lot of projects. Uh, I speak about two guys, too, I know, two, two mm -hmm. support, I know. Uh, so they are helping yes. new soldiers? Yes, one of them are... Okay, he's are training with, them. Yes, one okay. of them are in uh, my team, in my function, for a reputation program. You know, because it's very difficult for soldiers to accept to go see psycholog. Yes, of course. And uh, if it's a uh, keyboard to okay. tell, hey, guys, I work in my function, okay. come in my program. It's very more easy. Mm. All, right. All right, I take him. So that's a good transition. Yes, and the more important for them is to help soldiers to come back in civil life for work. Work. Okay. Working. Mm -hmm. It's the more important for them. Uh, because, uh, uh, you know, after a while, when you come back at home, you have nothing. You can watch every day your TV. Yes. You, it's very important you come back in life, like normal life. Of course, you can have normal life, but the more important is to have uh, activity in your life. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have activity, you start to be very crazy. When you work, when you make something, you don't think about this war. Mm -hmm. Because you know, we have need to, a lot of time for feel more peace inside. And uh, it's why it's very important for them to come back to work, to make something to help soldiers, to help children, to, to make something for Ukraine. It's very important for Actually, them. Actually, I think it's very wise for you know, to let those guys be useful, mm -hmm. yes. be handy, and uh, they feel purpose, mm -hmm. they feel, again, uh, something to live for, and they feel that they're helping yes. the younger guys. You, you know, one of my guys, uh, keyboard, was taxi in Kiev. Okay. Before? After. After. Uh, After he came back yes. from the airport, yes. he because started... Because I need to money, I need to work. Okay. He was taxi. Taxi driver. Imagine you was in war, 
It was in Donetsk airport. And after you know, it's you. interesting because I once rode, uh, rode a taxi and the guy, uh, you know, sounded like he was there and, uh, and I, well, actually I knew he, he, we talked about it, he was, but he didn't give me the details. So it might have been the same guy, but mm. it's interesting. Mm. It is very interesting. Um, and so what, what, what uh, um, like, again, uh, the psychology of soldiers is one issue, uh, but, we're, but we're talking about even the psychology within the country, mm. quite different, the mentality. Yes. What, what, do you, what are your find, findings in that? Ukraine is very credible because you have a lot of city, a uh, lot of country in one country. Okay. Uh, when, when we are in Kiev, we, we think like uh, when we are in Paris, it's business, uh, it's Kiev to know all for Ukraine, uh, and it's very funny. When you go in Lvov, they are very strong for tourism. They know okay. how to make business with tourism. They know how to be proud of Ukrainians. They know how to make like Ukrainian culture. Mm -hmm. When you go in Kharkov, mm -hmm. Uh, it will be war. It's not war in Kharkov, but you know, it's very, it's very near to Ateozon. And that's why every people, uh, they want just work for can uh, go in a restaurant, for example, or can uh, pay uh, appartment or, you know, but they are scary about this war. Uh, and in Odessa, never I was in Odessa, but my friend from Odessa, is very another <laughs> mentality too. You can have Odessa, it's more for, relax, <laughs> enjoy, of course, business, but, uh, and for me, it's very incredible to see in Ukraine, you have four uh, different uh, mentality. And, uh, and they are. And uh, it's very shock for me when I go, come back from Kharkov. Okay. Because in Kharkov, all, we think about war every time. Every time, every time, every time, every time. When I come back in Kiev, it's life. You know, it's okay. like, okay, we do all do be quickly, we do think about the business, we do why, the quality. Why, why, why is that? Why do you think is that? Because Kharkov is closer? Of course. Okay. Yeah, of course. 50 kilometers, I think. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, you know, in Kharkov, uh, uh, all sold that before to they come back in, uh, in Kiev or in, <coughs> in another city. They go city. through Kharkov. They, they go from Kharkov. But let's talk about another aspect of your work uh, with orphanage, with orphan. Okay. Uh, this is very important because those uh, those children they are in uh, the Ato Zona, and you have some orphanage in Ato Zona. And what do you um, what do you think about the those uh, can I say orphanage and about the orphan and what what are they what they feel now? It's very very difficult for them uh, because for example in of in uh, orphanage in uh, Ato Zona, you can have children to was from. Uh, Lugansk or Donetsk and these children when you speak about Ukraine they explain to they don't like Ukraine because Ukraine army kill father or mother mm -hmm. and after I tell but no you are in Ukraine you know yeah. and uh, it's why for them it's very very strong uh, and long work to we do make together uh, because it's very very difficult situation in the same case you can have children uh, to father died because he was in uh, Ukrainian army and in same room uh, and other children to lost parents in a... Uh, in, uh, yeah, we're the, talking about long-term issues. Yes, right of here. course, it's, of course. You know, it's children, we, do, we have time to help them, but we do help them now yes. for a long time. Exactly. And, and what is, what, what is the, ter the therapy? What, what are you doing Me, with the I, I use um, like psycho-leadership and psycho-corporal uh, therapy. It's like with children, uh, last, uh, last week I was in a Kharkov hospital. It's, it's orphanage and they have tuberculosis. You know, for, for start life is very difficult. And when I come see them, they are very like this, like very sad. And me, I help them to feel all your body. When you are sad, it's normal to be like this. And if you are sad, you do be sad. If you yeah. won't cry, cry, it's not a problem. It's normal to you cry because your life is like this. But see, you can cry now. And after you, you will see too, you can feel inside your more good emotion. Mm -hmm. And uh, with, this, with this student, we work about share, share. For example, we make play, like I will smile, and after I will give you my, my smile. Mm -hmm. And you will see too, because I give you something, you will have smile too, mm -hmm. and step by step. And it's very, very efficient work, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, you can see two children, uh, they start to open. Okay. And they start to don't make difference if you are from Ateo, or if you are from 
films, for example. I, I saw the photo before and after. Yes, that, that, yes. that was amazing. Well, uh, time is up, and uh, uh, we just hope that, uh, you know, uh, as far as Minsk agreements, that uh, uh, I hope that it will bring more results or in the worst case scenario army our army becomes stronger yeah and we can uh, you know bring peace to that peace territory peace. but thank you for bringing peace into their hearts right now mm -hmm. so that's very important as well yes, yes. so it was united country uat time by first ukraine our guest was nikola takusel the founder of smile for ukraine Olivier Vedrin and Sergei Berichansky were working for you in the studio. Stay with us and we will show to you the real crane. Thank you for being with us. Have a good day and see you soon.